Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Stand up for your country. Well, there is a Republican politician that has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Did you know that? I didn't know it until last week. We have him on tonight. I'm going to keep it as a surprise. It is an excellent story. And why it hasn't been widely distributed is a mystery. But first, we begin with a brutal mass murder that was partly the fault of our inept government in Washington. And that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. As you may have heard, 38-year-old Francisco Oropesa, a Mexican migrant, was apprehended by law enforcement in Texas after murdering, allegedly murdering, but he did it, okay, his next-door neighbors from Honduras, including an eight-year-old boy. He did that with an AR-15. He was on the lam for four days. They have got him. Now, here is the uh, reason I'm tying this into the federal government. There are the victims, okay? It's just horrifying. So Oropesa was deported four times to Mexico, four times, and he came back five times, okay? In the process, this has been going on for years, 2009 to today, he was convicted of a felony, all right? Driving under the influence, putting people in danger in Montgomery County, Texas, and he was sentenced to jail. Now, you may remember, and this is very, very important, and I'm going to walk you through it, that in July 2015, eight years ago, 31-year-old Kate Steinle was killed in San Francisco by a migrant who had been deported five times, a low-level drug dealer, who apparently dropped his gun, illegal gun, went off, killed Kate in the arms of her father. So I proposed a new law called Kate's Law, which would have put an end to this madness. This is 2015 July. Go. This month, 32-year-old Kate Steinle murdered in San Francisco by a criminal alien who had been deported five times times. As you may know, we have called for new legislation called Kate's Law, which would mandate any convicted aggravated felon who comes back to the USA after being deported would receive at least five years in a federal penitentiary. No wiggle room. Now, Senators Cruz and Cornyn of Texas wrote up an official version of Kate's Law. And again, that means if you commit a crime in this country, any crime, and you're here illegally, you go to prison, federal prison, mandatory five years. So no more back and forth deportation garbage. Mitch McConnell would not put Cornyn and Cruz's law up for a standalone vote. What he did was attach it to a vote that would sanction sanctuary cities because McConnell knew that bill would fail. No Democrat would attack sanctuary cities, where some Democrats, I believe, would have voted for Kate's law. Okay? So the vote in the Senate failed 54-45. Bye-bye Kate's law. Now, I call McConnell out. He wouldn't talk to me because he's a coward, but he did go on the radio. Roll it. Bill O'Reilly was on the day. He's got a new book. He comes on with me, you know, once or twice a year. And he said he thinks it's personal with you and O'Reilly why Kate's Law, which is great common sense, and people are furious about beautiful young woman killed by this maniac, allegedly. Why not Kate's Law? What is holding that up? Well, Bill is having a hard time understanding how the Senate works. We voted on a, a bill that included that. Sorry to interrupt, but, but why have sanctuary cities tied to that? Why not just make Kate's Law by itself because we can't pass it all by itself that's the problem i wish we had 60 votes in the senate to do whatever we wanted to do we've explained that to o'reilly repeatedly but he doesn't seem to want to listen no oh, put it up 
Let the Democrats vote against it so the whole nation can see it. You knew, McConnell, that pying it into a sanctuary city, tying the two together, would go down, which it did. You knew it. Oh, to this day, he is the worst. And that's one of the reasons the Republican Party is not at the level the Democratic Party is in effectiveness. Okay. Now, since Biden has been in office, more than 7 million foreign nationals have entered this country. All right? Not through our laws. Skirting our laws. 7 million. Okay? That is beyond anything this country has ever seen since the immigration laws were passed. Okay? Now, last year, almost 3 million migrant encounters, which means that the foreign nationals and the U.S. authorities deal with each other. And this year, it's going to be about 4 million. And Biden does nothing. Just that alone should disqualify him from running for president again with the voters. Just that alone. You created anarchy, Mr. President. You did it. You created it. Your policy. And that has led to these poor Honduran people in Texas being slaughtered. And I could give you countless others. The migrants themselves. And then Biden goes, oh, I'll put 1,500 uh, military on the border. Oh, yeah. But they can't do anything on the border. They just do paperwork. Oh, it's just beyond anything I have ever seen. If I were McCarthy, I would draw up impeachment articles against Biden just on this border. Failure to enforce the law. He took an oath, Biden, to do that. Yeah, it's not going to get conviction, all right, but do it so that everybody could see it. And that's the memo. All right, Biden's schedule today is official schedule. He's having lunch with Kamala. And he's having dinner with uh, some military people. That's it. So you got to eat, right? This is Biden. This is the schedule. This is what he does all day. Nothing. I guess he takes a nap between lunch and dinner. If you think I'm too hard on him, Bill at BillOReilly.com, Bill at BillOReilly.com, name in town if you wish to opine. Tell me I'm too hard on a man. Okay, point it out. I'd like to hear that. All right, let's go to the media. So uh, Tucker Carlson now um, obviously gone from Fox News. It's changed the whole television news landscape. And in order to justify uh, his uh, departure, um, there are now leaks coming out about what Mr. Carlson allegedly did or said or texted or email. These leaks are going to two entities, the New York Times, obviously hostile to the Fox News Channel, and Media Matters, the most radical left news, it's not even news, internet site that you could find. That's where these leaks are going, okay? The leaks are basically from the Dominion lawsuit in the discovery, the depositions, and they make Carlson look bad. Because again, people are leaving the Fox News channel, so the channel has to try to counter that, and somebody, I don't know who, is leaking out damaging stuff against Tucker Carlson. Here's what Megyn Kelly said, go. He said something like, well, my postmenopausal audience still find me attractive in this outfit. Meanwhile, when I reported this last week, all of my postmenopausal viewers, because I have a lot of them, wrote in like, yes, and none of us is offended by that, even in the least. <laughs> like, so nice try, Fox, but you tried and failed. So they first leaked to the New York Times. This is my supposition for the for the record. It hasn't been yet confirmed, but I know it's them. And I know it's Irina Briganti, who runs comms and hates Tucker. Sorry. She hates his guts. All right. Ms. Briganti says she had nothing to do with it. Um, I don't know. But I do know that in any corporation, not just Fox News, if you let somebody go who is popular within the corporation or with an audience or consumers, 
then you got to just try to destroy that person. That's how it's done. So somebody is doing that to Carlson. And of course, the Fox haters, the leftists on television, they love this. Go. So I have no words, not only for what we saw there, uh, but also by people who are going out there going, yeah, but at least he wasn't woke. So we're going to we're going to be OK with the most racist uh, rants that think we've we've heard on national news in our lifetimes but fox had been somehow in their own minds i guess holding up this line that that you know all these allegations of racism against tucker and against fox were totally false and i do think this line about this is how white people white men fight was was probably may have been the last straw for them there all right so these people don't know anything they don't know really what the root of this is and i don't know I can suspect, but I'm not going to report that. That's not what we do here. All right, but you should know what's going on. Bill O'Reilly here for Lone Star Transfer. If booking your timeshare has been difficult in the past, you know it's been almost impossible lately. Most clients are shocked to learn that their timeshare is now available to the public, severely limiting booking options. Many owners are upset their yearly dues have nearly doubled during this maintenance fee season. For well over a decade, this family-owned company has had the pleasure of helping more than 18,000 owners legally and permanently get out of their timeshare fees. With an A-plus rating at the Better Business Bureau and more than 900 five-star testimonials, Lone Star Transfer is a company you can trust. Lone Star Transfer guarantees the release of all liability to your timeshare in writing and in a specific time frame. So please call my friends today for a free no-obligation consultation at 855-551-7066. 855-551-7066 or online at LoneStarTransfer.com. All right, let's go to the mail. We got Todd Noonan. Pocatello, Idaho, nice town. The Dominion scandal was a hoax that distracted Americans from the wrongdoing committed by state executives who charge election law, who changed election laws to make illegal vote harvesting easy in the states. Todd, that is a conspiracy, a right wing conspiracy. There is no merit to it. The Dominion lawsuit wasn't a hoax. It was a money grab. And they grabbed Eight hundred million dollars. It was all about money. It wasn't about election law or anything like that. Jolene, concierge member. Please check that program out. Direct access to me. Bill, the mainstream media will be giddy once more when Susan Rice announces her bid for the presidency. I am afraid exactly why she is leaving the White House. That will not happen. <laughs> Jolene. See, I know these people. Susan Rice is not going to run for president. Doesn't have the money, doesn't have the will. Not going to do it. Susan J. Groton, Connecticut. Hey, Bill, I don't believe Joe Biden will be the nominee for president in 2024 due to his declining cognitive state. Someone like Michelle Obama were to step up. What is the time frame for that to occur? How would that work? Michelle Obama could literally declare her candidacy for president one day before the Democratic convention in Chicago. Because it's the convention that nominates. So if Michelle Obama rolls into Chicago one day and says to all the Democrats, nominate me, they could do it because they're the ones that fill out the ballots, okay? It's not a popular vote, none of that. It's the delegates to the convention. The delegates go, oh, Michelle is here. She'd be much better than Newsom or whoever it else would take Joe's place. Okay, Carol, concierge member, thank you, Carol. How can Corinne Jean-Pierre state that the border is 90% better now than it was and not choke on her words? Okay. She didn't say that it was 90% better than it was. She used some little, little 
kind of niche stat that wasn't true anyway. But Miss Jean-Pierre, with all due respect, not attacking her personally, loves the fame that she's getting, likes the paycheck, and is going to do what she is told to do to keep the fame and the money. Norman, concierge, we've got a lot of concierge members. Norman, shame on Mitch McConnell for trashing Kate's Law. I hope you see and understand now, Mitch, that blood is on your hands. I'm not going to argue with it. The turtle. Anthony Mendelera, Fort Myers, Florida. And I hope you guys down in Fort Myers and all southwest Florida are, you know, have recovered fully from that hurricane. Boy, that was bad, huh? Um, my wife and I are being told to take our money out of the bank, out of the stock market, or we'll lose it. Social media telling us this. Anthony, why would you take your money out of the bank? Why? Because somebody on social media with an agenda telling you to do that? My money's in the bank, Anthony. All right. Uh, now, you want to have it in insured accounts, FDIC. And uh, the stock market, I tell everybody I'm not buying stocks now. It's too volatile. I'm, I'm waiting. But not now. But please, all of you, don't believe what you write to me. I'll clear it up. Carve on Blossom, Texas. I really enjoy the debates with Cuomo. I think if he could pass his hatred of Trump, he would be considered a moderate Democrat. All right, so I'll be on with Chris Cuomo tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern News Nation. We do a Wednesday hit usually. I don't know what the topics are yet, but whatever they are, they will be live late. And we appreciate Mr. Cuomo having us on the program. Robert Slaney, Port Washington, New York. Bill, your commentary on the Satanic Club in high school was brilliant. There are no harmful clubs allowed in this school. Perfect. That was my rationale. ACLU can go, you know what, itself. Okay? I'm the principal. I'm not having harmful clubs. Satan is evil. That's the definition of Satan. You're not having a Satan club because it's evil. Very simple. I'm a simple man. Richard Schaffer, uh, Montreal, Canada. I got to tell you, Bill, if Godzilla was versus Jake Tapper, I would watch that. <laughs> I put a C note on Godzilla. I said yesterday that there were certain people on CNN, including Mr. Tapper, that nobody's going to watch no matter what they do, even if Godzilla was chasing Tapper around the studio. And Richard up in Montreal putting a C note on the monster. Okay, let's go to uh, the best Mother's Day gift in the world. And Grandma, too. Don't forget Grandma. I know there's a Grandparents' Day, but come on. So here's what you do. And this is so simple. You get Mom a premium or concierge membership on BillOReilly.com. Okay? When you do that, you automatically get a free book. You choose it. Any of my books, 18 number one bestsellers, you choose it. Free. And you get two atheism, nothing there, bumper stickers. Free. So mom, you can either give the book to mom or you can take the book. Mom will never know. The bumper stickers, if mom's religious, she'll like them. Um, and you got her a, pro a premium or concierge membership. Same thing on dad's day. So uh, May 14th, I think, is mom's day. So this is right. And then, you know, take mom out to dinner. But in conjunction, that's a great gift. Really is a good gift. And then we have all kinds of other great stuff. Team normal. Mom want, might want a shirt. Get on the team. OK. Tens of thousands of people are on team normal now. The fun of this is you wear a shirt or a hat. And we have shirts for ladies as well. You walk into Costco or any store. OK. And people see it and they're going to go, what's team normal? And you get the explain it to them and, and have, you know, a new friend or whatever. And, you know, makes life more interesting. Word of the day, do not be a sop. S 
S-O-P. SOP. Back with a final thought in a moment. Well, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now you could qualify for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan. You don't have to pay it back. Nobody knows about this more than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do the work and share a percentage of the cash they get back for you. Even those businesses who took PPP loans can qualify. Nonprofits and churches as well. So let covidtaxrelief.org help you get up to 26,000 bucks per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. That's covidtaxrelief.org. Okay, final thought of the day on the no spin news. So, after you reach the age of 50, 50, if you want to make the latter part of your life constructive, happier, whatever, you got to pay attention to your physical health. Under 50, you can run around, uh, you know, pretty much eat what you want, do what you want. I mean, you should stay in shape, of course. I mean, if you're big, chubby, and zoptig, you might want to lose a little of that. But after 50, then it gets to be more imperative. So I'm not a health nut. And a few years ago, I think it was three years ago, I went to the doctor for my annual, and you guys should be doing that, and I had high blood sugar. And my doctor, who cares about me, uh, says, what are you doing? And I go, you know, I'm eating too much garbage. I know it. So I knocked out 70% of the sugar. Not hard to do. And I don't like those sweetener things either. It's not hard to do. I mean, you can have some desserts. You know, you just got to space them out a little bit. And then there are low sugar things that taste good. You just got to do, you know, and I've recommended a few here. So I, I knocked the sugar down. That was number one. And then the Terra Dog, who has a tendency to put on a little weight, I took her on longer walks. And then the combination, I lost the love handles. I didn't have, I was never a chubby guy, but uh, I lost a lot of the excess. Okay, so I went in last week. I got a colonoscopy, which everybody should get. Because that, that, you got to, catch that kind of thing early, all right? So you should get that. And then I went and got all the blood worked up in it, and it came back that I had like, the, I have the blood sugar level of Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Who doesn't eat anything but, but sprouts, all right? So the blood sugar is way down, and I feel 100% better. I work like a pack animal here with radio and television and books, I mean, at my age, working like this, a lot of my friends are zipping around in a golf cart, you know, with uh, Coors Light and uh, hitting a golf ball. And not me. Okay, I'm working here. And uh, in order to do that and be clear minded and have the energy to do it every day, but Friday, I got to take Fridays off, um, I got to have, I got to be in good physical shape, being like an athlete. And I've been an athlete my whole life, so I know what that is. But I don't have time to go to the gym, and I don't have time to lift weights. I mean, so I'm maintaining. But the sugar is the key. I'm, I have pasta, and that turns to sugar, by the way, once or twice a week. I have a little ice cream twice a week, maybe. Okay? But I'm conscious of it. So, final thought of the day. Proactive in your health. Look, it's luck. Bad things happen to really healthy people. You're never going to be able to control that. But build yourself up to the best possible length that you can. Okay? Thank you for watching and listening the, to the No Spin News. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.